Hi friends, Thomas Manton IV here. Um, very unusual uh, evening I'm having. I'm feeling real burdened about uh, Boris Johnson in the UK, and frankly, I'm quite annoyed about it. It's four o'clock in the morning here. I couldn't sleep. I've been praying for hours, considering coming on here and talking for a few moments. Should have been sleeping. Probably look a little like Boris now. My hair, you know, his hair is always in the wind, you know. I am, I am furious at the church for not raising their voice. Now, maybe there's suppression. I thought about that. Maybe there's media suppression by the evil forces of darkness. Maybe. There's some people that want to talk. But I've been talking with some of my prophet friends uh, that have been with me for 15, 16 years. Seasoned people that have been with me, associates of mine, one that worked for my ministry for years, a spiritual offspring of, of our anointing ministry, and another prophet, independent, but a covenant brother who we've been knowing each other for years. In fact, before God TV started, there were meetings when Rory and Wendy... <laughs> Together, we're going around trying to drum up support to build their dream that people thought was crazy called the God Network, the God TV Network. And look, you know, you know, things happened along the way after a while that weren't good, but that was a, that was a powerful voice globally. So their vision came to pass, but back in those days. And we had a great visitation in England for years. My God, I feel the anointing just falling here right now. It's like the Lord has pushed me to do this right now. I'm telling you. And one of my prophet friends said, well, a lot of preachers in the UK, you know, these days, you know, they're, they're not living anything great. And I just wonder how, how oppressed, put down people have become that they can't rise up and speak for a man who God put in office who's now been taken with the coronavirus, so they say. And today he was put in intensive care. So I thought ah, I could, you know, take a shower and go to sleep, which I really need to do, both of those. And uh, call it a day, but I couldn't do it. I want to I pray prophetic fire right now. That God will heal Boris Johnson. You pray with me and share this. Let this go out. Because the powers of darkness, you know, what's the alternative? You have the liberals get in, you have the Muslims get in, you have others get in. What do you want? What do you want in the UK? From the other religion, there's a major political elected official in every county and city in the United Kingdom, in, in, in the nation of England. You know, people say the United Kingdom, all this UK stuff. When that came out, I was there when they were doing it. I, I didn't like it so much. I like Great Britain. Let's say Great Britain will be great again. Like America's becoming great again, although people want to mock that, but Great Britain should be great again. The great has been taken off. Maybe just call it Britain. So much compromise, so much evil. I was in Stratford in London. Yeah, Hazel, you pray. I was in, uh, Mary, God bless you. John, bless you. Those of you that are coming on. The Lord spoke to me about the power of a revival that will hit the British church. Not the, um, what's the word? Immigrants, you know, people that have come there from other places, which a lot have. You have a West, big West Indian community, well, that were there for years. They didn't just arrive there. Then you have a big, uh, a lot of African, African immigrants there. And people from all over, you know. Russians, Polish, Americans, Americans. A lot of people go to England, man. And not The weather's not good. I even went. I was even there for a long time. I lived there for several years. I, I was really blessed. Someone gave me a million dollar a duplex that I, I lived in and used uh, the bottom half as the office and upstairs was the residence with a rooftop and it was really, you know, great location in the West End. Wrote several things there. Wrote this book there. Well, part of this book, yeah. Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. You need to get a copy of this. I am... I am out of this. We're sold out. 
This is a phenomenal book. Look at this, you even got photos in there. Look at that. Whoa! There's a big crusade I did in Nairobi, Kenya, in Kibera. Countless thousands of people in the crowd. You can see that? The top picture with that red shirt with the gold on it was in my Success Institute in the city with some leaders. Wow, I didn't know I was going to do that. The Lord told me to bring the books. I didn't know. You know, he's the, he's the boss. I two other pictures in here. Me praying for some babies. These little babies came up to testify. These two little girls. They were so cute. Look how cute they are. And they were talking over the mic saying praise the Lord and all that. It was in the Nairobi Cinema. Famous gold curtain behind there. That was my venue. The bottom one really even better. This was in the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. PCEA, St. Andrew's Auditorium, which I had uh, our services there every Sunday for a long, for a long time. And uh, thousands of people, we estimated about 300,000 people came through our events in Nairobi that were my own events. And, uh, you know, when we added up all the numbers of the crowds and the amount of meetings and did the mathematics, you know, not evangelistically, but Accounting wise, <laughs> and this was the altar call in one of the meetings. Look at that, that was phenomenal. People in Kenya, a lot of leaders there, a lot of pastors were birthed out of that movement. And um, kingdom knowledge, leadership, love, ministry, miracles, money, obedience some of the topics in this book. So we're going to reprint. Also, this is going to be uh, uh, available online. Two other great books I've done, The Benefits of Excellence and The Laws of Success. And these are all sold out. Many printings we've done, and we want to uh, reprint those soon. I've been busy. And this week's been a week of prayer, I'm telling you. Um, for a lot of reasons. Some of you know, got some updates about me. Look at me now. I'm carrying on. Very well. But, uh, boy, this, uh, this attack on, on, the, on our leadership, this virus and fever hitting people, I know. It's terrible. It's evil. Uh, today they shut the lock. They locked the President Kenyatta locked the city of Nairobi up. Down. Locked down. Lock up. And I could hear people talking in Swahili. Locked down. I was like, what? And then I was in uh, my mobile office, I affectionately call it. I was there and I was having a meeting with somebody uh, at a certain place. And then these guys were outside and then I opened my windows a bit to, get, to let the sun come in a little bit through the window. Nice, beautiful sun rays were coming. And I did a little broadcast. Some of you have seen that earlier today. Uh, about 12 minutes long. I just had a minute because I was in between meetings. And I had to just do that. And I was la the Lord said, laugh at calamity like I do. So this spirit of laughter came over me, and I just said, let me just hold my phone and just go on anyway. You can see that. It's, uh, it's there at my page. Take a look at that. A different kind of thing. I feel like, I'm going to get to the point, I want to shout, I want to preach, I want to I wanna declare, I want to, I mean, I feel this new, I feel a new thing happening. You know, sometimes you just sit there, well, let's, you know, you know, let me tell you what God is saying, but, you know, and I, and I love to teach, I'm a teacher, okay? And some of these guys, they always have to make a lot of noise. Chris, welcome. Winnie, welcome. Maggie, welcome. Jeanette, bless you, dear. There you are. Welcome on. The Lord is, um, you know, just having me. I, I'm feeling some real zeal for the things of God. And that's going to happen all over the world. Let it happen in the United Kingdom. This is what I'm talking about right now. And my friend said, a lot of pastors are compromised. And I would say a lot are also oppressed. Compromise meaning their lifestyle is not, you know. So, okay. And, uh, but, leave that as it may. We pray for them to get fixed up. Fixed up, fixed out. Delivered. Set free. And make the decisions to continue on the right course of things in the kingdom of God. Uh, under the hand of the Lord. And unto the Lord. Oppressed, oppressed, subverted. But man, you mean to tell me 
that even until today, like a few people are coming out tonight, that 10 days ago, Boris Johnson, the prime minister, said he made a video himself. I saw it. And I was very disturbed and I've been praying. But today I'm like, this is enough. And I wrote to some of my pastor friends in different places, people in the, in the, in the, in the UK and people in the US and people uh, in other places. And I said, hey, uh, one of my main pastors, a dear covenant pastor of mine, I, I wrote him. I said, uh, does an American have to deal with this? Coming from Africa, sure, I'll do it. I'll do it. I am annoyed that mealy mouth preachers, man, they, they, they can't, nobody can stand up and shout and go into the streets and say, this is our prime minister who stands for right things, and this is the kind of guy we are shocked that he became the prime minister because the liberal other side wanted to come in. You know, that other, there was another guy. Come on. And all these other forces and factions, they just want to take the UK over and make it like an antichrist liberal state. And, and nobody can get really passionate. And if, all I hear is a few people saying, well, they're praying privately in the morning. You know, some intercessors and saints. Where, where are the pastors, man? Where are the guys that stand at the pulpit? Do they have a pulpit anymore? They've shut the whole thing down. A prophet friend of mine in London just, just wrote me a few, a few minutes ago. I was just uh, uh, communicating with some people about this to kind of get a, a little feel what they think being on the ground there. And he said, there's helicopters flying over the street now. And looking for people that are wandering on the streets to tell them, hey, get out of here. Or they send the police and, and, they, and they say you can go out for 40 minutes or something like that, too. How do you time 40 minutes to go shopping or whatever? Then go get back in your house. Then another guy came on, uh, another news report I saw. said the biggest spread of the coronavirus now is in the families in the house. Not outside, but in the house. So it's like, what are you going to? How are you going to fix it? But well, we're praying to curse it off the earth. But when it gets to attack a man who uh, is so important, a spearhead of a man in Europe who stands for conservative right things, I pray he's a Christian, I pray he knows Jesus, I, I think he's the kind of guy that would, would get to know that after a minute. Maybe he should meet some Holy Ghost, you know, good-thinking, straight-minded leaders, and it could happen. I feel the Lord, I feel the Holy Spirit is grieved Inside of me, I feel stirred up. I feel mad. I feel a little sad. I feel a little bit like I just feel, Lord, save this man's life. We're not going to let him go. I declare as your servant right now, we're not letting him go. I don't care what is in his lungs or where it is. Boris Johnson, be healed. In Jesus' name. Right now, it's 4.30 a.m. my time. I shouldn't be even up this late, but I am. It is like 1.30 a.m. in the U.K., I think, right now, in London. Touch him with fire in his bed right now. Send the angels and heal him. Give him the best medical care. Let no compromise uh, in, in, penetrators or, or assassins or anybody come from the outside, try to get in there where he is in the hospital. Someone also said that Pe President Trump was going to send a team of people to help him. I hope he did it. He better do it right now. If, he has, if they haven't got there yet, they better get there. And surrounds his room. Remember the, the, the movie The Godfather? When they shot him in the street, then he was in the hospital. And then they had to take and roll the bed out. The son, Michael, came and rolled the, to another room because the guys were coming to the hospital to visit to finish him off. This is no joke what we're dealing with, people. You think it's a joke? Where is the church in England? Someone, you get, don't get mad at me. Don't, 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 don't blame the messenger here. You better talk to God, because I'm coming to you from God, from him. Where are the pastors standing at pulpits and go, Boris Johnson, we love you. Get their people, go in the street, get a camera. Hey, the, me the, the mainstream media don't want to film that. The other religion doesn't want to give you that. The Liberal Party, liberals, whoever they are, they don't want to. They might say, oh, it's sad, and we're telling the Queen, and number 10 Downing Street is informing the Queen. I read all this. So what? David, hello. I'm in a hurry. I, I can't talk to everybody right now. Irene, hello. Come on, I'm trying my best, please. 
Please understand if I don't call your name every time you come on. Welcome, everybody, and let's pray together. Everybody that's coming on, welcome. You're welcome. Let's pray. God, I just wanted to uh, just throw on this shirt and whatever and just stick these two things here. And I didn't even tuck my wires in. I don't care, man. My hair is all over the place. So what? Like, I look like Boris. Like, just think of Boris, you know. His hair is always blowing. I'm going to get out of here and go get in the shower. I feel, I feel like I've been through the, well... Not the washing machine, or else I'd feel squeaky clean, but, wow, oh, Jesus, I've been having a long day, long few days, woof, you don't know. So, uh, I should have some music here. <laughs> Let's pray. I wrote a, I wrote a, a little article here. I, 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 you can't see it. See that? You, you can't see it with the lighting. It's so bad. Oh, there it is. Ah, with this picture of Boris here. Here it is. See that? Now, I'm going to have my studio set up where... Amen, David. Thank you, sir. I'm with you, too. I love you. When... Uh... Yeah, where are the saints? Yeah, where are the saints? Where are the pastors, man? Where's the church? Even in, Amer even in America, more people should be talking about this. So here's this nice photo I found. And uh... All right, I'm going to just try to read part of it to you so we can... But be praying. Let's be praying in the Holy Ghost right now. Lord, send your healing power. According to Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. You said you sent your word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Their destruction. Well, you know what? I, you know what? I looked at that scripture the other day and I said, uh, uh, I was talking to someone, and this revelation came to me. I said, well, I like half of it. I want to I want to take a little piece of it out. I don't want to call it my destruction. It's the devil's destruction. Dr. Keith Johnson, illustrious apostle. Bless you, my friend. Love you, mate. Glad you're here. I just felt to come on. It's 4.30 in the morning here. I felt to come on to, to pray for Boris Johnson. This is ridiculous that the church is not. I haven't heard anybody from the church. Crying out. I don't know where the pastors are in England. I don't know where they are. I don't know why they're not all online. I'm doing great. I don't know where they are. I don't know where the voices are. I don't know why people don't you think it's like a non-issue. Or maybe they think, well, separation of church and state was political. If you talk like that, you're not a Holy Ghost warrior. You're a, you're a, you're a pansy in the pulpit. You're a petunia flower. You... You, 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 you're a daffodil swinging, you know, swinging leaves every which way. You know, come on. Where's your, where's your chutzpah, man? Where's your testosterone? Welcome, Mozambique. Hello, Julio. I love you, man. Where is your manhood? Where's your womanhood? Where's the Holy Ghost in you? Religiosity is stupidity. I wrote, what are these religious people? They have religious, but they possess no power from the Holy Ghost. From heaven, this is too important of a matter to lay down. I'd like to get Facebook, not to have this blurry white screen, but maybe with a black screen. You know, WhatsApp did that. They had the dark image or the night mode. I like the night mode on the Bible verses and all that. Oh, this white light. Let me try to read it to you. From the desk of Dr. TM4. That's an old statement from like the 80s. You know, people used to write from the desk of... I thought, who got rid of that? That's powerful, man. That's powerful. That's timeless. I'm bringing it back. That's mine. Flip on you. You got to write, well, hello, friends. And, you know, how you doing? You know, or something like that. What are you, a millennial? Wake up, UK, dear. You're right. What are you, like a millennial? You know, TikTok. TikTok is funny, man. They're saying it's becoming a new great platform and Instagram and all that. That's cool. I'm with, I'm with you, man. You know, I, I think this is the worst time to be religious, to, like, be putting pictures of yourself behind you. And Well, they, please, don't, don't, don't get mad. I had have, I have one I had a poster that was, like, 30 feet long. They made a huge banner across a whole stage, like, 40 feet by 20 feet. It was, like, 40 by 20 and had my big face on the side. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of that. 
I see that and I go, woo, and I had an old picture of me when I didn't have a beard and mustache on and, and shorter hair and, you know, suit and tie. And we just need to be real and creative. And I'm into that, okay? But I like this from the desk of, I remember that's an old, old thing. That's a very ancient thing. But from the desk of Dr. T.M. Ford, that's my initials, Thomas Manton the Fourth. That's why the number four. Someone said, why is it four? Because my father was Thomas. My grandfather was Thomas. My great-grandfather in Ireland was Thomas. And I'm the fourth, okay? You got it now? All right. And my father and my mother had a fight, you know, an argument about what they're going to name me. So I got the middle name from mom. My first name was Thomas. I'm so happy about that. Anyway. So a new, here we, for, the, for the desk of moi, me, Tom, Dr. T.M. Ford. A news report today said that UK PM, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, has been taken into intensive care, the ICU. Now, doctors say when you go to the ICU, there's a serious problem, obviously. And he was on oxygen, but then they took him in. And I thought, I have heard nobody come out and raise their voice violently about this issue. And that is not good. And I, and I just wrote, I became, I've become so burdened about this. I've heard nobody come out in the UK since he posted a video of himself. He was saying that he got the virus. And I said, what is wrong with you people? Are you completely compromised? Completely asleep? Huh? Where's the outcry from anyone in the church? To come out and speak. Anyway, please, it's a little bit long. Read, it's not that long. Read, read this, okay? Read this post on my Facebook. You see this picture of Boris Johnson and what's above it. But I wrote, hey, it's not the time to be weak and have no courage. It's time to stand up and do something. Isaiah 52 said, awake, O Zion, thou that slumbers and sleeps, wake up. Isaiah 66, can a nation be transformed and born within a day? Yes. When Zion travails, she gives forth birth to her children. A new season, a new day. All right, people are writing comments. Bless you. I'm seeing the comments coming in on this one. Declaring healing. You see, like the Lord had, had woke, kept me awake to do this. It's important. All these people writing here. It wouldn't happen. Look at that. Spin it. What are going to do with this white light and this thing? Yeesh. Here it is. Comments. Whoo. When are you've read it? Yeah. But comment, comment. Everybody go on that thing and comment and write a prayer. Write something. So, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. What else you want me to say? The UK, yeah, in 1990, no, no, excuse me, 2004, it was, I, uh, 2005, I received some major prophetic words. Frank, hello, my friend. Blessings on you, man. Let's talk already. Yeah. Amen, David. The, the Lord is... Uh, Reminded me of a prophecy spoke of great, 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 great visitations, great, great breaking. Randy Hooper, pastor, man of God, love you, man, mighty man of God. Talk soon. Pastor Derek called me today. We spoke for half an hour. Very powerful conversation. Very powerful about things there and here in Africa and America and what's going on there. And I mentioned you to him and. Pastor Eric, we also spoke again. Wonderful. You guys are just great. I'm glad you're my friends, and I appreciate your, your care and concern so much. We're together as brothers in the kingdom. We're building the kingdom. Perry from Asia. Blessings on you, man. Is it Singapore? I think you're in Singapore. You're always, you're always writing good things. Bless you, Perry. Love you, man. And, and great, like there's going to be great reformation, great change. From compromised things. You know, these religious spirits get everybody to be so PC, politically correct, and tone down everything. But I saw like a violent army of people. Kim, Glenda, welcome. Blessings on you. I saw, hello from, hello from Nairobi, Kenya, Africa. You're in Georgia. Hey. I've seen you on there, Kim. Bless you. Glenda, bless you. My dear Glenda, woman of God. I, I saw like armies of people that are going to become fire filled. Now, let me tell you something. After this pandemic uh, blows through, hopefully this 
we're, we're just commanding it to be speeded up. You know, everything's now another 21 days of the whole month of uh, April. Uh, it's a mess. They just locked down the city of Nairobi. The president, Kenyatta, was on the thing. So, uh, I remember this lady came into a coffee shop I was at, and when they first introduced the social distancing, and I was standing near the counter, and she walked in and got pretty close like normal, and then she jumped back a step, and she went, oh, social distance with her accent. She was a funny, funny lady, a young lady. I was, like, laughing. I looked at her, and I went, oh, and I, ju I jumped, like, two steps that way, and I was like, yeah. So I was pointing at her, like, how far should we be from each other? Just, I'm ordering a cappuccino. That was hysterical. The way she said it, social distance with her accent. You know, I've been saying it ever since. The president was on today talking about that. Thank you, fellow Kenyans. You know, the speech. Uh, following the social distancing and blah, 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 And uh, decided to just close the city of Nairobi. So the, the main roads going out anywhere else in the parts of the country, they, the, they're having the police or the military, whatever, actually block the roads that nobody can come in and nobody can go out for 21 days, began at 7 o'clock last evening. Now it's 4, quarter to 5 in the morning. Bless Jesus. <sighs> Help me, Lord. However many hours that was ago. Let's see, 5 and 5, 10 hours ago. Close it off. So I thought, I'm here. I'm doing things. I got a lot going on, man. I'm blessed. I mean, things, I'm busy. I'm here. I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay, but well, people don't plan to travel right now. Forget about flying anywhere. Let me tell you a little something that happened with this coronavirus. Uh, the Kenya Airlines, Kenya Air, KQ they call it. What is it? Kenya Airways, yeah, Kenya Airways, that, the Kenyan airline company, was coming in their, their big uh, plane, the 16-hour nonstop flight from JFK, New York City, to Nairobi, nonstop, straight across. 16 hours one way, New York City to Nairobi, nonstop, and a big jet. When they got here, all 11 crew members were infected with the virus. This is what they said. This was a report. I, I just hope it wouldn't be true. You know, you can't believe everything you read in the media these days, but hey, this was a report that I saw. And they had a picture of the pilot. They couldn't have put it unless it's true because he's dead now. He got off the plane. He was very sick and uh, fell sick. They put him into quarantine, wouldn't let his family come to see him, and he died. Oh, isn't that horrible? And the 11 other crew members are infected. So what happens? They're in 16 hours in a plane with recirculating air, and some fool's in there with that disease, and they're coughing or throwing the drug, whatever, and it's going around. Everybody's breathing it. They don't know. So I thought, hey. Flights canceled. I posted something on my Facebook earlier. 50, they say 50, like 47 or 50, 47, 47 or 50, something like that. Southwest Airlines planes went ghost. Flew ghost. They actually flew from one place to the other with no passengers on board. I don't know why they did that. I think they should just save the fuel and cancel the flight, but maybe they had to get there for that plane to go to another, and they got to stay on their schedule. I mean, I guess they know what they're doing. It's their airline, but hey, uh, in Kenya, they have the matatus. If they don't get full, they don't even take off, so that's really cruel. People can sit there on a half full or three-quarters full thing, and uh, unless all the seats are full. And I don't, when you fill the seats, they sit in those things. Bless God. Bless God. Fooey on the devil, it's horrible. I'm praying for people, everyone to get their own rides, everyone to get their own cars. Everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. I like the way Lester Summerall used to do that. And everybody said amen. You got to have your own car. Charles Antiphon, great apostle of God. Oh my. Welcome. I'm talking about England. I'm praying for Boris Johnson right now. Can we pray together? The healing apostle just came on, Charles Edifon, by a Nigeria his church in Providence, Rhode Island. Can we pray together, Reverend? Father, in Jesus' name, and all of us right now again, we curse this coronavirus, every symptom, 
everything that attacks the lungs, everything that attacks the breathing, everything that attacks anywhere in the system, on anybody that we know that it's on or in. We curse it and command it to die in Jesus' name right now. And we thank you for total healing. Apostle, could you write an amen to that so I know you're with me on this? I see you've signed in, but I hope you didn't jump off. I hope you're still there. Yes. It's cursed in Jesus' name. And we pray for him. Thank you, sir. We, and we pray for him to be raised up tonight. It's now like uh, going on 2 a.m. in London. Right now in Nairobi, where I am right now, it's uh, uh, 10 minutes to 5. The Lord has not let me sleep. I've been praying all night before I came on here. Such a burden, such an annoyance, I feel. Where's the church in England? That, are they praying, really? I know people. there are real people everywhere. But I haven't seen one pastor, one leader stand up. I haven't seen it since 10 days ago when Boris, bless his heart, he's so precious the way he talks. He made his own video, so it looks, talks so humbly that the coronavirus, you know, touched him, attacked him, and, and he has some symptoms, and he's getting tested, and all he tested positive for it 10 days ago, and I've not seen one post, one broadcast, I've not heard one announcement. I've not seen one post, not one. I haven't seen. I'm not saying that there weren't any. I hope there were. But I'm, I'm always on the feeds all day on the social media, more than I should be probably. But I'm, I'm trekking all that. I've, I've got so many thousands. i got thou, tens of thousands of people in my account, tens of thousands. And I, and I, people have put, and I, didn't post, I didn't see one. Let's pray for the prime minister. Until like today, when he was admitted into intensive care. Are you kidding me? To the ICU unit in the hospital. That's dangerous. One doctor said, you know, no one goes to ICU unless it's a serious issue, okay? Are you kidding me? Are you thought, oh, well, it's okay, you know, I got other things to do, I'm busy. Well, why do you think you're home? Let me prophesy. I'm going to get into something right now. I feel the anointing. I've not thought of this. I've not said this before. I've not heard anybody say this. I'm, I, I'm the, listen to the voice of God right now through his servant right here. Why do you think you're home? Porashito. Hurakisata. Why do you think you're off? Because somebody said, oh, we want to inconvenience you. Don't you think God wants that time? I, I've been thrust into a realm of prayer. I've been having visitations since they started this quarantine nonsense. Well, maybe I, I shouldn't call it nonsense because it has a purpose, right? It has a benefit somehow or other. But I started having visitations. You think I'd feel sad and go, oh, God, what's this? No, I haven't, I haven't felt like that at all. When they close shops at 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you're used to going at 6 and 7, you go, oh, it's a little bit inconvenient. Then they, now the city shut down. Well, I wasn't planning to go anywhere right now anyway. I'm right here in my assigned, in my assigned place. I'm right here in my, I, I'm busy. I'm doing a lot. I have a lot. I'm being blessed. A lot of things are happening. I'm busy right here right now. I, I'm okay with this. I don't need to go outside the city right now. I don't need to go anywhere. I was going to go to the coast on the ocean again, and my friend's hotel, they, the management said close it. There were no people there. The flights are empty. It's eerie. There's unrest. It's crazy. People are, it's chaotic. People are afraid. People act weird. The shops are closed. The restaurants are closed. Everything has shut down. It's not even a good time to go on vacation. Unless you want to just take a drive as far as you can go to get to a scenic place and stop there and Hang out in the day, but then you got to get back before the curfew time starts at 7 p.m. So do it in the daytime hours. You don't have to stay in the house. You can still go out and... Uh, John, bless you. You have a lot of names, man. Four names. Okay. Let's pick one. I'll call you John. Welcome on. The Lord is uh, wanting this time with us. This is a Sabbath. This is a sanctuary time. This is the time to catch up on, on studying. This is the time to read some things that you've been, you should have been reading. Dr. O, drum roll. 
Dr. O, I don't know if you know Charles Endifon, a great apostle. Sorry, I don't mean to brag on you too much, Charles, but you are such a great man of God. He's up in um, Providence, Rhode Island, has a church there. Yeah. And uh, Dr. O from Nigeria, uh, we, we interviewed me a few times, and we had some great, great uh, discussions over the word and prosperity and financial abundance and the power of the spoken word and things like that. I remember very well. And those blessed a lot of our people. Those messages blessed a lot of our people. This is a holy time. Definitely not a time to get sad. It's a time to get glad. I remember the scriptures say the Lord laughed at calamity. Today I did a broadcast a little bit early. It's only about 12 minutes long. Take a look at it. It's a bit strange, and I was just kind of holding the phone. I just felt like a, 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 a holy laughter come over me, and I was just like, wow. I started to laugh, and then the president was on talking about, he, love you too, doctor. He, he was, he was uh, talking about they're going to lock the whole city down. And then I hear the guys going, lockdown in Swahili. And I started making my comments out. I just started to laugh, you know. And the Lord said, at calamity, Thomas, thou shalt laugh. At calamity, you shall laugh, just like I do. At derision from the heathen, and the heathen rages, I'll laugh from heaven. And um, I just started to laugh. And I thought, we have victory over this. So let me prophesy to you, we have victory over this. It's time to laugh at the devil. I remember an old message by Kenneth Hagin. He says, when you're having trouble, just laugh at the devil. Ha, ha, ha. And he started doing that. And people, people, uh, <laughs> he, people started to laugh, you know. And he was teaching them how to laugh. It's better to get it's better to get glad than sad. It's better to get happy than it's better to get into rejoicing than into depression. So I feel I feel the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Nehemiah eight ten. Somebody write that on the screen for me. Nehemiah eight verse ten. Mary Gold, if you're still on, I'm praying for you. That all that God has promised will work out, and it has to. It just has to. I just know it. And I just declare it again. It has to. So, uh, Father, we lift up Boris, his physical body, and we curse the virus. If that virus be on anybody that's watching, or anywhere near me, or you, on me, in me, near me, or you, on you, near you, in you, curse it, and command it to die in Jesus' name and go from your life. And you will not die. You will not get sick. You will not suffer loss. And even financially, the Lord will bless you. Even financially, the Lord will bless you and take care of you because he is your Jehovah Jireh. Even in this season of downturn, people are saying, hey, if this uh, lockdown stays on after another few days, few weeks, uh, it's, it's not sustainable. The economies can crash. It's terrible. So uh, we pray for our President Trump. We pray for Prime Minister Boris Johnson, you know, for, to be raised up. I commend him. I, I can kind of see... Uh, he just needs to come out of that hospital, not stay there too long, and just be revived because of the prayers of the saints, because of our prayers, in Jesus' name. And anybody that has this disease that you know, don't know, not aware yet, lingering around, trying to come, someone's going to touch the surface where it is, someone's going to get touched by something, you can't see it. But I command that it won't touch you. It won't touch me. It will have no effect on us. The Lord spoke to me, says, you're not going to die. You're going to live and declare my glory, and declare my works, display my glory, perform my miracles. I was writing that somewhere today. I wrote it, I think it's on one of my Facebook posts. Uh, perform his miracles. Display his glory. Thank you, John. That's right. Operate in the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. 
advance his kingdom around the world. This is our work. And I tell you, I said it today, I'll say it again. There's a season that we have yet for a couple of more decades. Oh, yeah. You know, not everybody's 20 years old. Amen, Pastor Randy. You know what I mean? Not everybody's 20 years old anymore. We're not 20 and 30. We, we always, I had this prayer, you know, but the Lord can't answer it. It's not possible. Well, uh, anything with God is possible, but it's, it's not a practical prayer. You know, I wish I could be who I am now, knowing what I know now, but 30 years ago. Turn the clock back. Give me back at a younger Thomas. And uh, anyway, but say la, say la vie, such is life. We, we have another round. You know, Matthew 24, I was talking about this with Pastor Derek on the phone. Pastor Derek called me today from America. And we talked for 30 minutes. Jeanette, you know, we talked for 30 minutes. Powerful stuff about here and there, Africa and America, the church there, my ministry here, things. It was very, very profound. And one thing the Lord brought back up to me was when I was reading Again, in Matthew 24, it said, you'll see these signs, even pestilence, even earthquakes. An earthquake hit the Caribbean. Earthquakes, there's tremors going on in America right now in different states. It's crazy. Crazy what's going on right now. But Jesus said, the end is not yet. So it, it's the begin. he said, talked about the beginning of sorrows. So it's the beginning of the end. We, we, we can kind of ascertain that by the way things are shifting in, in world events now. Look at that, 5 o'clock and these guys have gone off. Their alarm has gone off. You know those ones with the loudspeakers? How dare you while I'm speaking to do that? <sighs> 5 o'clock a.m., here we are. 2 o'clock a.m. in London. What time is it in? 10 p.m. in East Coast America. 9 p.m. in Texas time. Mountain time, 9 p.m. Anyway, California, 7 p.m. But the Lord is, and then Asia, 10 hours ahead the other way. It's like later in the day. It's tomorrow, or later today, rather. Father, I thank you that in the whole world that this coronavirus will be canceled out. You're in Dallas. Bless you, man. Look for, I, let, let's get together when I come. I'll be coming there. Let's stay in touch, John. Some good things are going to happen there. The Lord, the Lord is uh, having us. It's our job as the prophets and, and people of God and pastors and evangelists and intercessors and business people and everything else. Yeah, 9 p.m. I was right. The Lord has let me know this. Our job to chase this damned thing out of the earth. And we're doing it. And especially key people. We don't need to lose them. So let's continue to pray as I'm just going off the, the air. And I'm going to keep praying. I've been in prayer for hours and hours and days on end. Um, that Boris Johnson, Lord, you have, him in the, you have him in your hands. And they're not going to open and drop him. Lift him, take him, preserve his life. God, I feel the anointing. Whew. You feeling this? And heal him. And get him strong again, back on the job. And raise up other powerful conservative leaders. Conservative is like a curse word to some people. But I mean people that have right perspectives as far as a biblical worldview, a God-centered worldview, a righteous kind of... I can't, I can't go all over into that right now. I want, you know, I can, but you know what I mean? I hope you, you the trekking with me, get it. Um, in Europe, something the Lord's, a uh, nation the Lord's had me been praying for also is Venezuela. And I prophesy right now, I'll tell you again, prophetically by the Holy Ghost, that uh, Venezuela is going to become a uh, cap uh, democratic and capitalist country again. Yeah. Amen, Pastor Ben. It's going to become a democratic country again. I'm praying for Cuba, for Havana to be a city of, of uh, excitement again. Maybe not for the bad things that went on there, but 
Cuba to be cleansed from this communism, socialism. Venezuela going to be broken loose. I'm telling you, that guy, Maduro, I heard, you know, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, after I had prophesied this, I didn't know that these things were being worked on. I had no idea. I hear God's voice. I'm in Africa. I hear God's voice. And he tells me about, he talks to me about nations. I'm a prophet to the nations. Uh, you know that. And something I don't say very often, but the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me in an open vision in 1986 and laid his hands on my head and said, my son Thomas, I've ordained you as my prophet to the nations. Now at that time, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know anything. I had just gotten saved, supernaturally. Got saved, not in church. I was a bodybuilder and uh, went to a health food store to get some uh, mega protein and some supplements and vitamins, things and all that. And it turns out the owner of the health food store was a Christian. He started witnessing to me. I nearly cursed him out. I was like, you know, my muscles were like, uh, you know, I was like, I wanted to grab the guy and shake him, you know. What are you telling me that for? Were you religious or something? I didn't come here to hear that. I came to get stuff for my bodybuilding pro. He just looked at me and smiled and said, okay, no problem. I came back again, didn't know why. And I, one day I got there and I said, hey, I forgot what I wanted. Why did I even come here? And they all looked at me and smiled at me, the Christians. Said, we know why you came. And they were laughing. I was like, ha, ha, ha. So they had a, a party, uh, health food thing at his house. And uh, uh, went there and then we watched the King of Kings movie. They played it in the basement. We sat there and then the the Lord came in and came for me. It was like Saul of Tarsus, you know, on Damascus Road, man, the appearance of the Lord. That's how I got saved. Didn't, and didn't, not from any church. My, neither, nobody was born again in my family, on either side of the family line. Nobody. And, uh, sorry, I'm playing with my fingers here. Shouldn't be doing it. So the, yeah, so, so after that, I started having these visitations, open visions of heaven, hell. I'll tell more when I have more time. We'll get into some of that. But the Lord appeared to me and ordained me as his prophet to the nations, himself, Jesus himself. Yeah, I'll explain more about that another time. So uh, that's how it happened. Didn't come from church. Didn't come from a man's hand. I was anointed and ordained by God. So I'm glad to be out here in the field. Yeah. So, and have been for all these years. Now, now, all over the planet, 32 countries I've been to now. That's not too many. That's a few, but we have more to go to. But 32 countries on all six continents of the world. Uh, preached to millions of people face-to-face uh, -face in big crusades, conferences, outdoor stadium events, and all kinds of things. And uh, tell by television, radio, internet to multiply millions of people. Mary, I see you on all the time. I want to honor you. Thank you for trekking with us, Mary Cole. Blessings on you, dear. Uh, so after I had prophesied about Venezuela's breakthrough some weeks later, uh, here comes Secretary of State Mom Mike Pompeo, and he says uh, they're putting a $15 million uh, contract on, on uh, Maduro for his arrest from Venezuela on some charges, and uh, they want him out. They're taking force to do it. The man will go, let me prophesy, the man will go, and a new government will be set in place in Venezuela, and the business community will come back, and that whole socialism thing will be canceled, and it'll go back to being a democratic society uh, with the business world based on capitalism. Dennis, bless you, welcome on. I'm about to take off here. It's after five in the morning. Great. It's great. So, yeah, offensive warfare. That's right, David. We're going for it. We're doing it. So now we pray again for Boris. He's in Boris Johnson, the prime minister of England. Lord, that he's in your hands. We pray for all the leaders of all the nations that the wrong ones will go and the right ones will come in. Corruption's being broken. Things that have held, held people captive are being broken and destroyed. And the Lord is, uh, well, I feel a real weight of intercession. I'm going to jump off the air here and keep praying. Go transition. 
this in the morning here, but uh, you keep praying. Let's see Boris Johnson come out of that hospital, healed and healthy. Joan Hunter, woman of God, bless you, dear. Welcome on. I'm just about to wrap this up. I've been we've been having a broadcast here, praying about uh, uh, praying for Boris Johnson to be healed, and I'm declaring that he is. And I oh, I'm also cursing the coronavirus and everybody that we know, whether they know they have it, they don't know they have it. It's possible they can uh, touch something or connect with it somehow, and it can try to attach itself to them. It will not touch us, because Psalm 91 says, and if it tries, it'll just be destroyed by the power of God. Like John Lake, you know, he had faith. They said, take those uh, plague things and let them touch me and look under a microscope, and the cells scattered and moved and died. Because he said the resurrection power of God's working in him. So I prophesy over everybody that it's going to be working. And I'm also praying for a reformation Revolution in the Holy Ghost in the United Kingdom, of course in Kenya also in the nations of Africa, but in, in, in the nation of England that the church will rise up. <laughs> On the plane, we ain't flying now, my friend. I'm telling everybody, don't fly now. Don't make any plans to travel on airplanes right now. People came back from, uh, well, I don't want to repeat myself, but from a Kenya, Kenya Airways from New York to Nairobi, and they had the virus, the pilot died. Terrible. Anyway, read that story online. Uh, I'll post it back up too. Father, thank you for your touch. Again, I'm excited about reprinting of our books, The Benefits of Excellence, The Laws of Success, and Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. And they'll be also becoming ebooks. We'll let you know about that and several other new ones that I'm writing. Very exciting, very exciting time we're living in. And let me prophesy to you we have a season ahead. The end is not yet. Jesus said, You'll see these signs, but the end is not yet. It's the beginning of sorrows, perhaps, yes, but not the end because we have another season ahead of us. I'm declaring a good 20 years for people that are not 20 and 30 years old anymore. If you're 20 and 30 years old, you need to believe for 40, 50 years or more. But if the Lord comes, here's, here's the statement. When the trumpet blows, da -da -da -da, phew, I'm leaving. But until then, I'm blessed and occupying until he comes. And by the way, we're going to go up in the rapture before Armageddon. So what do we can say? Armageddon out of here. <laughs> We're not staying for that. And here's the logic behind that. I've always been a pre-trib believer. The rapture, yeah. The Lord's coming to take us out to make us warriors to be with him, you know. Watch the earth, you know. There he's at. He, all this stuff about his wrath has come upon the earth. Why would he do that to his own children? Why would he do that to me? I've suffered enough with the gospel. I, I, I've, I've, hey, I've been serving him all these years. Are you kidding me? I don't need to be subject to devils. Hey, man, John, it's going to happen one day, John. We're going to go up. I'll see you before that, but see you then too. I'll see you before that. So, uh, Father, we thank you. It's the greatest time to be alive. Man, I feel good. The Lord is, uh, is on our side. He's on your side. No virus will be your portion. We pray for Prime Minister of the UK. Great Britain should be great again. Put the great on, great, put the great on Britain, Lord, again. Let it be great again. And let Boris do his work. Let the church rise up. I was talking about, I just feel furious that no pastors have raised their voice the last 10 days since Boris Johnson made the announcement on video that he had uh, tested positive for the coronavirus. That is sinful. It is evil. Are people that weak, compromised? Maybe they're living in sin. Maybe they're, they have no guts. They're suppressed. They're oppressed. They're 
politically correct. They're all religious, so they think they shouldn't speak, or they're afraid of the media, or they're afraid of the, the who's who or the powers that be. What kind of guts do you have? Where's your chutzpah? Where's your testosterone as a man? Where's your... You know what I mean? That was a natural thing, but I mean, in the, the Holy Ghost... Uh, you, uh, there should be a cry when a leader like that, who God put in place to do great things, to take the country in a certain way and, and be standing up for the right things, you need to cry aloud and spare not. And the Lord stirred me up. An American, imagine, via Africa, where we are now, to come and speak to the United Kingdom. I don't care, I'll do it. I'm, I'm glad I'm the man for the job. But God, let the church awake in England. Let the church awake in America. This is a separation of the wheat and tares. Well, that's going to be later. The, let the, the Jesus let them grow together and the angels will sort it out after, at the end. But you know what? You see who true people are, true Christians, full of the Holy Ghost. But after this thing, people are going to get, get this, after the Sabbath time, people are going to get this, that, hey, uh, our life is not ours. This thing is this 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 thing is futile and fleeting, this life. But we need to just uh, give ourselves fully to the Lord to advance his kingdom. Chad and Lisa, bless you. Welcome. I'm about to wrap this. You could please uh, play the replay and share this with other people. I've shared some good thoughts here on intercession against uh, this virus and praying for uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson to be healed, about the church, about a lot of things I've said, different nations. Um, I feel a burden of intercession. So this is a time of prayer. It's a time of consecration. It's a time to come back to the Lord. This time off, this lockdown, this quarantine thing that's going on in the world, it's a time to pray. Don't think that God doesn't want the time with you. Then you're not so busy. You don't have an excuse anymore, you know. I heard one man of God say today, it's time to work. Don't just sleep your life away either when you have time off. Pray, work, study, build. Hey, wherever you are, you can build. If you have a creative thought from God, you can have the time to build your own business now. Build your own enterprise. Build your ministry. Build your prayer life. Build your study life. Build all of that. This is what God wants. And it's going to Cause a revival to shake the world. Revival's coming. The end is not yet. Be encouraged. This is a beginning of sorrows. It's not the end of days. It's maybe the beginning of the end, but it's not the end. There's another season ahead of us. And we're going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. In Jesus' name, love you much. Talk to you again real soon. You can partner with us. Please do that on paypal.me. I wish someone could put those on the screen for me. Uh, we'll put them in the comments so you'll see the, on the play this back again on the replay. I wish I had a keyboard here. I'd be playing it myself. Playing it, I mean typing it myself. So uh, paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. That's the PayPal. My website is an easy way to get there. To, so thank you, John. ThomasManton.com. Oh, did Dr. Mike Brown also get hit with this? You see what I mean? Another preacher, a uh, uh, well-known guy, does television broadcasts. I was talking to him in uh, Branson, Missouri. He said he got the virus, too. Sad. The evangelist friend uh, died last week. But I think he had a health issue. I think he wasn't that strong in his immune, and he had pneumonia or something like that. They blamed the COVID, but he was already. And I heard the news. I just had a bad feeling. I had a bad feeling. Something was. Okay, he doesn't have corona. Good, that's good, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. PayPal.me. John, can you read you that? PayPal.me. Not me.com. It's PayPal.me forward sign. Thomas Matthew, another one, Cash App. Sorry, I'm talking slow here. I'm a little bit. Frank, you're there. You know, it's like 
I'm thinking of the, the cartoon. Remember the guy who was in the back and he, he looked like he wasn't in the race anymore? He stayed back and all of a sudden he came up. <laughs> there he was it's by surprise. That's you, Frank. I love you, man. PayPal.me. Thank you, John. There it is. Okay, let's put cat the cash app. Please use these folks. Uh, ca- cashapp.me. Cashapp.me. Forward sign. Dollar sign. D.R. Thomas Manton. That's a long one. But on the website, again, is www.thomasmanton.com. David, you told me to pin it. Frank, here's a guy from Missouri, a pastor man of God friend. Good man. He's been telling me how to, we need to pin this at the bottom. Can you help me with that? And John, can you help me with that? Because I've, I've heard it like five times. And uh, Dr. Keith Johnson, who was on earlier, a great apostle, he, he's my friend. He told me that one time to pin it to the bottom so it stays in the comments. The way to sow so people can be there. Cash app, yeah, the handle is dollar sign. But the full, uh, the full web link is www.cash.me forward sign and this other here part here. Pastor Noel from Lamu, Kenya. Bless you. Uh, I know you wanted me to come see you guys. I've been advised not to come um, because of the security right now, but I want to come. Well, down, nobody can go anywhere. But Kuwait, Oring, bless you, dear. Agascon, are you from the Philippines or something? Where are you from, dear? She's living in Kuwait now. You're not from Kuwait. You're from somewhere else, and you got there, I bet. I bet. I bet I'm right. And tell me where you're originally from. I think you're from the, the far side of Southeast Asia somewhere. One of those countries. Maybe the Philippines. Good morning, sis. Where are you from, Oring? Agascon. Bless you, dear. Welcome. I was right. The prophet's on it. Philippines. Said it. Filipina. Some of the best workers on the planet Earth. Ladies from the Philippines. Man, they could outwork anybody. You all are precious. I need some more of you working in the ministry with me and doing things. You are diligent, diligent folks. And wonderful spirit and attitude. Love you. I love you guys so much. Filipinas, yeah. Oh, that's great, David. Pray for us for a team to rise up. I have some new team members coming on. Very, very precious people. And uh, we need more. We need to build a thing. I want to build a great studio. I want to be broadcasting very high quality, excellent stuff. And uh, we're going to be doing it. So let me jump off here. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Uh, You're from Kuwait. Oh, you were there all the time. It's very hot there. I've been to Dubai, man, boy. The heat is like... The only way I could describe it is when you walk out about 1 o'clock in the afternoon and walk out where the sun is on the street, you feel like an oven door has been opened up over your head and the heat just comes down on you. 120 degrees, man. One time I was there, when I left, it was, it was a real miracle. It was 117 in the daytime. And when I left at night, it was 111 degrees. This was in the month of July, so it was in the summer month. And when I, I landed in Nairobi... Oh, you're from the Philippines. Yeah, there you go. I landed in... Oh, you live in Kuwait now. I get you. I was right again. Praise God. So, uh, it was 55 degrees in Nairobi. The summer is the winter in Nairobi. So, I went... It was exactly half the temperature. It was hot, 111 degrees when I flew from one place. When I landed, it was 55 degrees. Like, half. Hot to cold. But uh, what a world we live in. Father, thank you for the redemption of nations. Thank you for redemption of nations. Danielle, welcome, dear. Got to replay this. I'm about to jump off here. We've been praying for the prime minister of uh, England. The Lord's been giving me a burden for that. It's 5.30 in the morning here. I've got to go. The Lord bless you. Love you much. Thank you for uh, 
putting our ways to sow into the ministry on the screen, the Cash App, the PayPal, the website. If you're in Kenya, East Africa, there's a thing called M-Pesa. And Kenyan people abroad also know about this. You can use this from outside of uh, Kenya. There's ways to send it through the mobile thing. The number is uh, it's a Kenyan number, 0792-320-780. Can someone put that on the screen? M-Pesa? M dash P E S A. Pesa is Swahili for money. Peso is, you know, the Spanish word for money. Pesos. Mexico. Zero seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero. My WhatsApp number, if you could want to WhatsApp me, is the same. Uh, add the country code in front of it. Can someone put that? Plus two five four. Seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero, and if you want to call me in the United States, uh, plus one seven four seven two six faith, which is plus one seven four seven two six three two four eight four. Leave a message. I'll call you back, and I'll also get a transcript of your your message. When you hear the beep and you hear my voice, don't hang up. Wait till the click uh, the beep and say something. Tell me something specific, and I'll get every word, and I'll write you back, talk, call you back, and talk to you as I can. So the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. That means a lot. You're still with us. Thank you. Thank you for that, Frank. All right. I'm trying. Love you much. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish... Pray and desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. King James says, wish. New King James says, I pray. And New International Version says, I desire above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. First Peter 2.24 said that by his stripes we are healed. We were healed. Isaiah 53 says we're Healed by his stripes. Um, Matthew 8, 17 said Jesus went about healing all who were sick and oppressed. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Um, in the epistle of John somewhere, is it 1 John 5, 14 somewhere, I don't remember exact, the exact address of it, but it said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he would destroy the works of the devil. So this uh, virus, this disease, this epidemic, it's the work of the devil. And we know this has been planned. This is not just about a virus, folks. This is a, a diabolical plot to control the world, to dismantle things in the world. You, you know that. You've, you've been reading all this stuff. And I, I don't want to take time to go into all that. Maybe on another broadcast we'll talk more about that. But the Lord is... Uh, Showing us it's not just the, the, the virus is, is real, but it's part of the smoke screen. It's part of the methodology to use for uh, freedoms to be taken away from people. Imagine they're closing churches now and their governors with guts like in Indiana, Florida, and Texas have to stand up. Wa Mariti from Malindi, bless you, dear. You're waking up. I'm still up. I've been praying all night and I've got to go take off and just uh, transition here for a bit, and I have a full day tomorrow. Today. <laughs> it's already today. <laughs> uh, hey, God is wanting to anoint us to shake the world loose. Amen, David. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us, we condemn it, because this is our heritage as servants of the Lord. Isaiah 54, 17. Another favorite scripture is, of mine is Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. And I like this saying, this cute saying, when you want a prophet, you need to find a prophet. You need to listen to the prophet because the, the prophets are the voices of God that give direction and creative words to send you on course in the right way. And Amos 3, 7, of course, says, I'll do nothing, the Lord said, unless I first reveal my secret to my servant, the prophet. And people should echo 
the voice once the voice speaks in the eighth verse in Amos 3 there. So the Lord bless you. Um, I'm also reminded right now of Revelation Revelation 5. Ah, I'll tell you, I can't remember the exact address of the scripture there. Talks about um, talks about the Son of God, he was the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world to receive power, riches, wisdom, glory, honor, might, and you know, strength, and f- for the purpose of dominion. Now, God didn't need that Himself because He already is that, but He 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 wanted to transfer that to us. So those are key words for you. You're f- you're, you're to be full of power, wisdom, riches, wealth. Strength, might, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and power, all of this for the purpose of taking dominion in the world. And that's your job. So let this time of solace and be an assembling of people and relationships together more greatly and also for you directly with the Lord and let him anoint you afresh to do his will in the earth in Jesus' name. And let... Let his power come upon you for you to bring his healing power to people and even to speak over the airwaves like I've done here to our dear friend Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of England. Be raised up, be healed, come out, get back to work. And we thank you for ordaining, Lord, Lord, for ordaining new leaders in nations to be great, 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 great kingdom people for you. In Jesus' name, to change the kingdoms of this world into the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Love you. Thank you for sowing and partnering with me. Please do that. And I look to hear from you. You can WhatsApp me also on the number plus 254-792-320-780. It's on the screen. Someone can put that back up there for me. Plus uh, 254-792-320-780. Send me a WhatsApp. Also, right on here, you can just click on my my page here and uh, do a Facebook Messenger message if that's easier for you. Just do it. And out of sight, out of mind. So don't be out of mind, out of my mind. Connect up. Let me let me see you. Let's converse together and build a friendship for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God. Love you much. Got to go. Talk to you soon. Keep praying. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Martin the Fourth, and I'll talk to you again very very soon. Love you much. Thank you so much for being with us today. Amen.